Hi everyone, and thanks for being here today. My name is Michelle Tuma, and I'm the Northern Canada Veterinary Specialist for Veterinarians Without Borders Canada. I'm speaking to you today from Yellowknife Northwest Territories Canada, which is located on Treaty 11 Chief Dry Geese Territory and the traditional land of the Yellowknife's Dene First Nations from time immemorial. I acknowledge that my parents came to Canada as settlers and I have deep gratitude to have been born on these traditional lands, surrounded by the unique and beautiful landscapes with amazing people and abundant flora and fauna. During my work travels, I've been a visitor to many areas across Northwest Territories and Nunavut, including the territories of the Klicho, Denende, Thatu Dene and Métis, Gwichin, Inuvialuit, and Inuit. I deeply appreciate the continued opportunity to learn about the culture and traditions that are the foundation of Northern life. Today, I'll be chatting with you about increasing access to care across Canada's North through our Northern Animal Health Initiative and the programming that we are developing to provide sustainable and long-term animal health solutions for our partners. So a quick note about who I am. Um, I was born and raised in Yellowknife Northwest Territories, Canada. Um, so where the little red dot is in Northern Canada there. Um, after vet school, I returned to Yellowknife to practice. And in 2015, I started working with different organizations offering community, uh, community outreach and access to vet care across the North. I've now traveled to over 30 communities in Northwest Territories and Nunavut for temporary vet clinics and community outreach. And I began, began working with Vets Without Borders Canada in 2019. I'm excited to continue to develop programming to increase access to vet care in the North. So access to vet care has always been limited in Canada's North. In the Northwest Territories and Nunavut, there are only two permanent veterinary clinics, both of which are located in Yellowknife, the capital of Northwest Territories. The remainder of the 56 communities, the majority of which are remote and only accessible via air, struggle with disease and population management of their local dogs. In 2022, Vets Without Borders operationalized our Northern Animal Health Initiative after three years in pilot mode. As part of an organization with established international programming and guided by One Health approach, we are bringing unique framework and models to our Northern program. We now have partnerships with 12 communities in Canada's Arctic, where the program focuses on building long-term, community-driven, sustainable animal health models. These 12 communities are all First Nations or Inuit and are remotely located, so they are hundreds of kilometers away from other communities or towns, and they may not have road access or, or are only accessible via plane. The remote landscape of the North creates many social and economical challenges, including limited access to healthcare for both humans and animals. The goal for the Northern Animal Health Initiative is to bring improved community health for remote populations through replicable, sustainable, community-driven One Health services. There are three pillars that support the framework of our Northern program. The first is community-driven partnerships. So working with the community as a partner, understanding what does the community want and what do they see as their needs. The second is sustainable vet care. So what happens once the clinic is finished? Who's helping out afterwards? While we're in the clinics, we always aim to provide first aid and lay vaccinator, lay vaccinator training to increase um, community capacity. And we're also developing the community animal health worker and telehealth programs. Lastly, education and research. So this includes knowledge, knowledge sharing between vet, Veterinarians Without Borders and the communities and between the communities themselves. We also provide information sessions, usually while we're in a community, um, but also provide summits afterwards and legislation development for our partner communities and for the government. So although the Northern Animal Health Initiative has a lot to do with the temporary clinics and community outreach. We are more than just temporary clinics. We support community needs and access to care with overall community health at the forefront of the solutions. The clinics are the first step in building a strong relationship with the community and their residents. And it's important to bring awareness of vet care and One Health to the community. In addition to the partnerships we create with the communities, we also partner with local organizations to build their capacity for service delivery. Much of our programming is volunteer-based and we are 
accessing non-veterinary volunteers to assist in database management, monitoring and valuation, and more. As I mentioned, a very large part of our programming is our temporary clinics and creating partnerships with the communities who reach out. So when a community reaches out to the Northern Animal Health Initiative, we start to build a relationship that leads to them becoming a partner. As a partner, we consult with local stakeholders and listen to understand what the community views as their needs. We visit communities across Northwest Territories and Nunavut on an invitation only and consent based basis to provide a once annual temporary vet clinic. Although we recognize the importance of the vet clinics for relationship strengthening and assessment of the community's dog population, it does not address the longer term goal of sustainable and consistent animal health services in the North. So one of the programs that is currently in development is the Community Animal Health Worker and Telehealth Program. So our vision towards a Community Animal Health Worker Program for the North is similar to the Paravet or Community Health Worker models already present in the Global South. There are, there are multiple components that would make up our program. So of course, training of interested individuals during our clinics and potentially afterwards. So this includes lay vaccinator training, pet first aid training, and basic, for, uh, basic pet care training. An awards program that was recently launched that would help identify candidates. A telehealth program that's in development that would actually make sense in the North and would be used to support the community animal health worker and government relations to support, to support the community animal health worker and um, legislation changes. So if we train a local community champion and provide them the resources to take on the role of community animal health worker, this individual will be able to address priority animal and community health needs, such as vaccinations, triage and first aid, and being a connector within the community between the dog guardian and a telehealth veterinarian. The community animal health worker will be the main driver for consistent access to animal care within their community. Although Vets Without Border ha Borders has many other international programs that can be paralleled in the North, we still need to consider the unique challenges that are present up here. The main challenge would be that there is a high turnover of interested individuals who would want to fill the role of community animal health worker. Identification of a possible candidate is important. To aid in identifying interested people and to increase veterinary and One Health related studies in the North, we created the Access to Care Awards program. The Access to Care Awards program was launched earlier this year, and two vet school scholarships, five bursaries, and multiple pet first aid courses were awarded. These awards were developed to decrease barriers for access to education and training of Northerners. This will also hopefully help continue to foster the interests of these individuals who later on may want to become their community champion or community animal health worker. As I already mentioned, there is a very unique landscape of the North within the majority of communities having no road access and limited services. There are only two vet clinics in Northwest Territories and Nunavut and neither provide after hour services. Many communities have a small health center for humans and do not have an actual hospital or pharmacy available. The Northern Animal Health Initiative has trialed the use of a different telehealth platforms already existing in the past, but have not succeeded in finding a platform that addresses the unique challenges that pet guardians face in the North. So we are in the process of developing our own telehealth program. This would involve the use of a 24-7 teletriage service that will have culturally trained individuals who understand the challenges and limitations in the North. Follow-up care would be provided by myself, including mailing medications to guardians if needed. We envision the telehealth service to complement the Community Animal Health Worker program by providing an outlet for information gathering and advice pending each situation. Our telehealth program will hopefully be launching at the end of the summer in three pilot communities who have already who already have partnerships with. Our community animal health worker model is focused on capacity strengthening and community empowerment. The goal is to provide community members with improved access to sustainable community driven animal health services. So what are the next steps for this program in the north? Thanks to a generous grant provided by PetSmart Charities of Canada, we are currently creating a program that aims at development and implementation of a community animal health worker model for the North. 
The first step is creating a Community Animal Health Worker candidate identification model. We will identify pilot communities and through community consultations and needs assessments, we will develop a model for identification of a community animal health worker. This could be a local resident, a bylaw officer, wildlife officer, teacher, etc. It may be best to have the position added to an already existing job, job description. For example, the municipality hires a bylaw officer who can also act as the community animal health worker, but this would be determined by the community voices. Once criteria is developed, a community member selection committee will be created to ensure that an ideal candidate is identified. Once the candidate identification model is developed and accepted by the community, then it can easily be replicated in other communities across the North. After identification of the candidates, we would strengthen the capacity of the community animal health workers to support community-driven One Health goals. This would occur after community consultation and onboarding to the community animal health worker model has been completed. Alongside the partner community, identified infrastructure needs and requirements for communities in order to have a successful community animal health worker implementation would be addressed. This would include anything for increasing awareness of animal care, to pound shelter holding infrastructure, to access to equipment and tools to build dog houses for localist residents. A curriculum for the community animal health worker would be developed and act as a training module across the north. Once training and onboarding of community animal health workers in our partner community is completed, then the program can be implemented. Our telehealth program would be a resource for the community animal health workers, and we would also facilitate communication between community animal health workers in each community to learn from and to lean on each other. The final step would be increased community awareness of available animal health services and animal health best practices. So creation of community awareness campaigns for existing services for Northwest Territories and Native communities, and then also expansion of the model to other communities. Our community animal health worker model is the best solution for increasing access to animal care consistently and sustainably across Canada's North. This model will bring increased awareness of animal services, increased community empowerment, and increased overall animal health and human health. Although there are always barriers and challenges to implementation of new programming, we are motivated and keen to bring a community animal health worker model to the North and are excited to continue working towards sustainable animal health services for everyone, so that we can continue to have happy owners, happy dogs, and have happy communities. Thank you, Kuana Masicho, uh, for listening to my presentation. And now I will have some time to take some questions. Thanks again.